Welcome to Cheers. I'm your host, Avery Woods. Hi guys, welcome back to the Cheers podcast. I'm your host, Avery Woods, and today is a very special episode. Scotty is here with me and he's so nervous. I am obviously always behind the camera, so it's very different. Yes. So if you guys don't know, this is Scotty and he is my producer slash kind of assistant, I guess now. It's a little bit of everything. It really is. And he does all the production behind the scenes for the podcast and He's obviously one of my best friends as well, but his story is so inspiring and a lot of you guys wanted to know more about him. So I figured, you know what? It was time. It was time. And I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. Let's do a little intro. Perfect. So obviously my name is Scotty. I'm, I have, my name is Scott, but I feel like Scotty's just better. It's very you. Scott is just too business professional. So Scotty is going to be it for a while, but I was born in California, moved here when I was pretty young. And I've been here for, I want to say, pretty much my whole life. It's a pretty good chunk. But obviously, I was raised LDS. I was I have a really big family. Mm-hmm. I have six siblings. Huge family. A ton of nieces and nephews. Mm-hmm. Probably, I think there's over 15 now, so there's too many to count. But I am obviously your full-time employee. I was in the wedding industry for quite a long time. Mm-hmm. And before that, really, I was a self-employed bitch in high school and didn't really do much besides work at a bakery and that was about it. Scotty's a hustler. One thing about Scott, he, you started wedding videography when you were like 15, right? Yeah, I did my first wedding when I was 15. Yeah, which is crazy. And then he, I mean, we'll get into all the nitty gritty details, but he served a full mission. He's always been hustling. He never got a college degree, but he never needed one because he's so good at what he does. And I feel like, you know, when we started this together. I was so lucky to have you with me throughout this whole journey. And you didn't know anything about podcasting. Nothing. You taught yourself everything. You had a couple people here and there give you like pointers and tips. Almost like a mentor. But then you ended up just finding whatever on YouTube or Google or wherever. Totally. And you never cease to amaze me or impress me. Like you will show me stuff and I'm like, how the hell did you do that? And I'm sometimes don't even know myself. Well, (laughs) but nothing would be up and running without you. I appreciate it. I hope you know it. No, it's truly a dream come true to like be doing what I'm doing. So thank you. Oh, also we have to cheers. Oh, duh. Um, Scotty took a shot before. This. Yeah, I need that. I might need another one. In like an it's hour. a little too early for my belly, so I'm drinking water. Perfect. Uh, but thanks for being. Thank here. you for having me. Wait, we need a drink. Oh, ASMR. <sighs> Yum. You're gonna be burpy Delicious. now after that. I know. I'm like, I'm not drinking any more of that. All right. So, also shout out to Brad and Lisa Hatch, who are Scotty's parents, because they're the cutest people ever. Truly the best. Brad is my contractor. He did our kitchen backsplash, and he's redoing our floors. He's truly an angel. And your mom is also so sweet. The biggest angel. So let's go back to your childhood. Totally. Tell me about that. I had, I feel like, a very amazing childhood. I was very blessed and lucky. I I was, I feel like I had a pretty normal life. Like, Mm -hmm. it was a, especially like in the Mormon world, it was like that perfect cookie cutter life. Like, we had family that was very close. Our siblings were all very close. And we just grew up like being very, you know, tight knit. And we are still like that to this day. Mm -hmm. But my childhood was honestly, I was so like lucky and blessed in the point of like, My parents were always very supportive. I was very much not into like the sports scene like my brothers were. And my parents were just like, well, what do you want to do? And I was like, I want a camera. Like when I was like 10. I got my first camera, I think when I was 11 years old and I was just messing around with it like in my backyard. And then I was like, wait, this is actually really fun. Like I really like taking pictures. Mm -hmm. And then it just slowly turned into this like little thing of like starting my business when I was 15 called Hatch Productions. (laughs) And it was like the sweetest little thing. But I just got into that world. But as far as my childhood goes, I just had a very normal, beautiful childhood. Like yeah. we always had everything we needed. My, I don't understand. My parents had seven kids. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. My dad worked. Don't know how they did what they did. Like He'll tell me stories where his mom would just lay out an entire loaf of bread just to slap sandwiches together every day to make the kids' school lunches. It's insane. And I'm scrambling every day just to get one child off to school. No, I don't understand it. And your mom did seven of them? Yeah. That's There was insane. one point where all seven were in the home, and then my older sister obviously moved out and got married, but like it was the six of us for quite a while. And then obviously they would get married and moved out. 
but my parents would go through a gallon of milk a day. And you're the youngest. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Youngest of seven. We, it ranges from 23 to 40 right now. It is crazy. They would go through a gallon of milk a day, two loaves of bread. And I just don't understand how they afforded it. My dad was a contractor. Yeah. And my mom did at work, but like seven kids, they were all in sports besides me. Activities All these daily. boys just inhaling yes, food. A hundred percent. His brother Tyler will come over with his dad to help with contracting work. And he would always say, like, we would literally just come home and eat bowls and bowls of cereal. Oh, we had 12 boxes of cereal 24-7 in our pantry. <laughs> like, and but here's the thing though, is like we always had food, mm-hmm. haircuts, clothes, sports, everything. I still don't. I mean, obviously the economy was very different, but I don't understand how my parents did it. Like shout out to the Hatch family. And we never were we were raised like very much never like knowing like if we struggle financially, like we always made everything fun. Mm-hmm. So we never really knew. Like our parents would tell us now, like, oh, we were broke. But I'm like, how did you do that though? Truly, like, still this day does not make That's sense. That's amazing. Good so. for them, though. I no, know. Truly. And it's so cute because your dad just got his new truck. Yes. <laughs> and he's so happy. Oh, I know. And he so deserves it, too. Oh, totally. All of his kids are gone and have their own families and full time careers. Totally. I'm like, you deserve that. Oh, all of his success is very well deserved. So you obviously grew up very much involved in the Mormon church. Yes. Correct. So every Sunday, Mm -hmm. that's where you were at. It was every Sunday. It was seminary every weekday at school. It was mutual activities on Wednesdays. What the hell is mutual activities? When you get together with people your age. So like the youth of the church, you would go and have like little activities. It was a daily thing. Like there was always something going on Mm -hmm. throughout the day. But yes, raised very LDS. I served a full-time LDS mission in Reno, Nevada, Spanish speaking, which is like, I'm very happy for that. It's so hot when you talk (laughs) in Spanish to me. One of my favorite things, like, I'm so happy I can, like, use that a mm-hmm. lot. I still feel like I use it quite a bit. You do all the so time. So that's also really nice. But, yes, raised in a very tight-knit, like, what's the word that they use, like, when you're, like, super into religion? Like, you're very, what's that word? Um, invested? Invested, but, like, devote. Oh. Very devote. Like, we were very, like, in it and very involved. And all of us, like, that's another thing that, like, my mom, it's crazy about my mom. She got all of us ready for church. And yeah, that just blows my mind. She is a saint in my eyes. The fact that she gave birth to so many children alone. (laughs) And then I told, I literally just told you when you came over here, I was like, I every day, Monday through Friday that I have to drop Ziggy off at school, feel like I got hit by a bus. No, truly. Cause it's just chaotic mornings by myself with both kids and you work and I work. And obviously I just have Stevie at home with me after he's dropped off. But like that one hour between seven and 8 AM of me trying to, I'm like with seven children Truly do not understand Yeah, that. she's my hero. She's amazing. So your dad was a bishop, correct? Yeah, he was a bishop. When I was a senior in high school, he got called to be a bishop, which for those who don't know, it's an ecclesiastical leader. So basically it's similar to like a pastor. So it's someone that like is a leader of a small congregation. Mm-hmm. And that's who you talk to for if you need money needs, if you need uh, food, money, any kind of like stuff. He like helps them with it basically. He's also there if you need to like confess sins and like worry about those kind of things. So that was his for five years. So when you say called to be a bishop, who calls him? There's a thing called the stake president and they basically have like, so in the church, there's like leadership, like roles, like there's the top and then there's like people in the middle and it kind of just like funnels down. Mm -hmm. So like in our, in the LDS church, it's a prophet. He has his two counselors, 12 apostles, a 70, and then it goes down to like bishops, stake presidents like there. So it's like a huge branch of like leaders. God, you're so educated. I know, right? It's like I've been a part of it for 20 years. Oh my God, it's like you served a mission and taught people for two years. No, literally. The church. It's crazy. <laughs> I hope I know it. So for those that don't know, Scott loves men. Extremely <laughs> homosexual. So Scott is very openly gay. And I honestly, when I heard your story about how you were raised and serving a mission and how comfortable and open you are with your sexuality. I thought it was so inspiring, which is why I really wanted you on the podcast, not just for people to get to know you better, but I also think it'll help a lot of other people in your totally. position. Yeah. Maybe that aren't ready to come out or feel disconnected from their family because of how they were raised and totally. maybe they're not accepted. Absolutely. What age did you know that you were gay? Oh my God, such a young age. I was, I remember when I was like six or seven. Really? Yeah, I would have, we had this family across the street from us Mm -hmm. and their son was my age and their daughter was my sister's age. And we were outside all the time playing together. We would literally go to the park together. We'd go to gas stations and get drinks. Like we were very close and I recognize like little things. And I don't think my little seven-year-old brain knew like, oh my God, I'm gay. And that's like a crush of mine. But like I never had 
crushes on girls. I never looked at a girl and was like, oh, she's so hot. I looked at girls and I was like, she's cute. Like, I want to be a friend kind yeah. of deal. Yeah. But with guys, it was very different. I was like, oh my God, like, he's really cute. Like, I want to look like him. And then I was like, oh, well, maybe it's just a face. Maybe it's just because yeah. I want to look like them, not because I'm attracted. And then as I got older and older and had more interactions with men and I, I kind of like grew into myself a little bit more, I started to realize like, okay, no, I'm gay as fuck. Like, this is <laughs> like, this is not like a phase. This is not like a... And attract, like, this is full. I'm like, I am gay. Yeah. And it's actually really cute. And this is why this is, like, a really beautiful full circle moment is when I was 17, I listened to a podcast, the What We Said podcast, and Tyson French was talking about his experience growing up LDS and gay. And he was 23, I believe. And now I'm 23, and I'm on a podcast sharing my story. So, like, that's that's why I was so excited because, obviously, we'll go into, like, my job with you. But, like, just to be able to share my story was, like, really, it was, like, a full circle moment. I love that. So... You obviously served a mission like we talked about yeah. and you knew you were gay and you had said something to me that crushed my heart, especially obviously with you being my best friend, but also having a son. Totally. And you said, I served the mission because I thought God would turn me straight. hundred percent. And that just killed me inside yeah. because it's not something you can fix. Totally. It's, you're born that way and that's 100%. who you love and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But you served a mission because you thought, because you were obviously so involved in the church and very much so believed at that time. Mm -hmm. Totally. So did you feel like it was your duty to serve because you were male? Pretty much. So growing up, especially like in the LDS church, it's like for men, it's, there's not even a question, like it's mandatory. For girls, it was an option. And I knew I didn't want to disappoint my parents. And I was like, okay, I'm going to have to go. So I need to start like accepting that fact. And everything like growing up, on TV or in movies, homosexuality was always like a negative thing. Like it was always like the murderer in the movie or this like, uh, like a mistress situation. It was always negative. And in religion, a lot of the times they only support marriage between a man and a woman. So that was another thing that I saw. Like it was always like looking at homosexuality was bad. Gay is bad. Like, no, like a big no, no. So like obviously growing up in such a devout religion, I was like, well, then I can't do that. Like I have mm-hmm. to do whatever I need to do to not be a part of that. But I was on Pinterest looking at Harry Styles shirtless, like drooling over guys in the gym room. I'm like, oh my God, he's so hot. Get old the Harry Styles shirtless <laughs> Pinterest. Oh, and one of my girlfriends in high school looking at my Pinterest history, and I'm like, it was inspo for like my fitness. <laughs> <laughs> not Harry Styles being so scrawny at the time. So I truly so are you getting caught with your girlfriend oh, that you're trying 100%. to cover up the I was like, it's not mine. It's my fitness journey. I whatever am it was. Deceased. Yeah. Okay, so you served in Reno. Yes. And internally when you left, were you certain of the fact that you were gay and thought maybe God would change it for you? Yeah. Or were you in denial? I was at that point very much like these next two years are going to be so hard. It's such a hard schedule. Yeah. You are expected to be up at a certain time with a person 24 seven and go to sleep at a certain time. Like it was a very strict Mm -hmm. schedule. And I knew about that before I left. Like all my brothers had served and told me about their experience and they would always say it was beautiful. It's beautiful, but it's also really hard. Mm -hmm. You only get to talk to your family once a week. You're like basically thrown into this life where you're doing something every single day. You never get a break. And it was just go, 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 go. And I, at first, like for the first like four months of my mission, I was like, yeah, like I feel like my attraction's going away. Like this is good. Like I don't feel like I'm gay. I feel like, cause I was like, I, the church has like articles about homosexuality and I'd read it and I'd be like, I think this is good. I would write girls on my mission, which I love you all that I wrote. I'm so (laughs) sorry. (laughs) I wrote so They're many girls. They're waiting years for this man. No, he truly, comes back and he's like, yeah, breaks my heart. totally kidding. I love the D. No, it was so sad because like I would like message them like, I'm going to marry you. And I know. Because I was so convinced. I know you came back feeling so guilty because you're the oh. nicest guy ever. And going on dates with them the first time and I'm like, I just want to like focus on my career. I'm not going to date right now. Like it was bad. Oh. But on my mission, like. I told my companion or my mission president from the very beginning, which a mission president is like your leader Mm -hmm. who you like go to for anything like a bishop almost on your mission. Yeah. And I remember telling him from like, like early on, like, I think I'm gay. I might just be like a, I'm just, you know, want to look like them kind of thing. I didn't want to make it a big deal, Mm -hmm. but I knew when I was like 16, I was like, no, I'm gay, but I'm going to like go around this and like figure out the loophole so that I can go to heaven basically. Like that was all I wanted. 
And growing up, like it was like the end all be all is like heaven. And if you do everything you're supposed to, like you'll go to heaven. So I was like, I'm going to crank out these next two years. And if I'm super like loyal and obedient and everything, then I'll come home and have the perfect cookie cutter life, marry a woman, have kids, have leader, like leadership in the church. Like that was what I thought. But boy, was I wrong. My companion started getting hotter. And I was like, this is not what I expected at all. Okay, so I want you to tell your first kiss story because I think it's so iconic. A lot of people actually don't know this story. So it's like, I'm actually really excited. You don't have, do you want to tell it? Oh, I 100% okay. do. Okay. Um, so my first kiss, I never, obviously, I actually kissed a lot of girls before my mission. And there was one companion of mine who was very openly gay, I felt like. Mm. Like a lot of people knew. And uh, he like had told people before. And so I was like, holy shit, like that's crazy. Like you're still here. And we were literally the best of friends. Loved him so, so much. Still do. One of my favorite people on the planet. And there was one time where we had a zone conference, which is when like a big chunk of the mission gets together. And he messaged me and was like, hey, like we're farther from town and our mission president wants us to be closer in town. Can we stay with you guys the night before? Mm. I was like, absolutely. I'd love to catch up. We are in a two bedroom apartment and our companions. So his companion and my companion were really close. So they were like in another room super happy to get to like see each other and we were really excited because we've served on each other so much so i was like i get to finally like talk to you and like catch up and we were in the other bedroom and we put our mattresses on the floor and we were just chilling and we were like literally like little kids whoops and we were like laying down and we're like oh my gosh like it's so good to see you like we were like in like a movie and so we kind of like wind down for the night and he taps on my back and we kiss i am not joking you like as a missionary that is a very big no-no like mm -hmm. very big no-no and I kind of freak out a little bit. And it was like this whole thing. And we didn't just kiss once. <laughs> it definitely so was. You, after you freaked out, we're like, okay, I kind of like that. A hundred percent. At first I was like, well, here's the thing though too. And that was your first kiss with a guy. That was my first kiss with a guy. Butterflies from head to toe. Oh. And it's so funny. because like, like, finally, I never mission? felt this with a No, girl. literally. It was like, this is what. It's supposed straight to people like, experience yeah. like holy cow like this is like euphoric yeah and i was so excited but then like as it kept going i was like no like this is a no-no and was like quiet for the rest of the night turn the light off and like we wake up the next day and he's like i'm so sorry and i was so angry i was like you're the reason i'm gonna go home now like i'm gonna go home now and it's gonna be this huge thing and i'm gonna get shamed so bad like i did not want my coming out to be like that and i remember telling my mission president about it because that day you have interviews which is where you confess talk about your companions, the area. And I was so nervous because I'm like, I'm going to go home. And I still have like six months left or four months left. So I tell him and my mission president, the reason why I still have so much love and respect for this man is he said, well, how did that make you feel? And I was like, it doesn't matter how you feel like you're supposed to send me home. Like I made a big mistake. I need to go home. And he's like, well, not necessarily. And he, from that point on, like was just the most supportive man on the planet. Oh. Good. Which is really crazy because he's such a big leader in the church Yeah, that I was like, holy cow, like, because you were so soft spoken to me, like, it was a beautiful experience. Sure. So the fact that, like, I kissed a guy, felt guilty, but that he made me not feel guilty and, like, make it, like, a negative thing, I was like, shit, like, this is, like, becoming more and more real. Yeah. So I remember before I came home, it was during COVID. So, like, I was going home, like, right during, like, the peak of quarantine in May of 2020. Mm -hmm. And the you have an interview usually before, and that's where you talk about marriage and, like, make sure when you go home you respect your girlfriends and remember to stay worthy. And Worthy as in, like, don't have sex? As in, like, don't have sex, don't, you know, do anything that would prevent you from getting married in the temple. So I remember I was, like, he we, like, have our Skype call because it was COVID, and I was, like, all right, what do you got for me? And he said one thing that just melted my heart. He said, go home and be yourself. Aww. Which you can interpret that in any Whoever way possible. Whoever that is, you're amazing. He's truly the best. That's incredible. And he said, go home and be yourself. And I interpreted that however I wanted to because that's, you know, my experience. Yeah. And I was like, I think I'm going to be okay. Yeah. And so I go home, have this beautiful homecoming. It was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, there's the cutest little video. Oh, it's video. so cute. Scotty hired his own videographer for that. Literally, because I'm like, melted my heart. I need my own show. As you, as you <laughs> should, like, I just devoted two years. You just devoted two years. You better get a fucking production when you come home. Yeah. All so, his family was out holding signs in the airport. It was so cute. It Typical was beautiful. Typical LDS homecoming. Oh, 100%. We see it all the time when we're traveling for the oh, podcast. Yeah. We're always like, oh, missionaries are coming yeah. home. Yeah. <laughs> But We're like, Slay, you got it. I There's this girl specifically. I love her so much. And I it's wrote her. Really. I know I'm like, please, please, no, I love you. 
she was one that I was writing very seriously. And after that interview, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to marry her. I was like, okay, like I need to like tell her now, like this isn't gonna work. So like the day I get home, she's at my house and was so excited to see me, looked gorgeous. She is so stunning. I most mean, beautiful. And I she's don't a nurse. Anything less and she's gorgeous. From you. Literally most beautiful. And I told her, I felt so, it literally melted my heart because I have such respect for her. And she was so sweet. She sent me packages on my mission. She sent me like socks and snacks and drinks and like all this fun stuff that was happening outside of the world. She was like bringing like a little bit of reality to my mission. For sure. One of the sweetest people and I will always have a love and respect for her. And I remember telling her, I was like, I think I'm going to go up to Utah and go to college. But regardless, like I don't think I'm ready to date. And she was like, we wrote very seriously for like a year. And I felt so bad because I truly, in the moment when I was writing her, I was like, I can make this work. But it's, it truly was so heartbreaking when I told her like, this isn't going to like work. And she was heartbroken. And I felt so bad because I feel like there was a few girls that I was writing because I truly was like, if I'm going to marry anyone, it's going to be these people because they'll probably put up with me because they're the sweetest souls ever and whatever. But I felt so bad, like having to like crush people yeah. that were like expecting more and uh, you know, pursuing a relationship with, but it was just not going to work out. <laughs> so what happened from when in between you coming home and then you coming out? Oh God, were a you long like time. dating guys? How long? Oh the yeah. Time was so this? when I got home from my mission, I actually moved out really quick. Cause I knew like, cause when you're on your mission, you're basically living away from your parents. Yeah. And I just wanted to keep that independence yeah, and like sure. have my individuality. So I moved in with my brother for a few months while I was like getting a job and like solidifying my money basically. Mm-hmm. And so I moved out and I started working in construction, <laughs> which is so freaking weird because I'm like, I don't do construction. No, one thing like, about Scott, he can fix anything in the house. I will say it did teach me a ton and my he, dad as well. He but. is my literal husband where if David is gone or working or out of town or something, I will be calling Scotty to fix no, something in my house. No, it's something I'm so grateful for. But I did construction like framing I, homes. I bet you were such a hot construction No, guy. it was so weird. And then all the guys were like, can you hand me that? I'm like, can you help me lift it up? Yeah. Like, they're all like, can we have like this gay motherfucker get out of here? Like, we can't do shit when he's here. And so I did that for a long time. And after, because in construction, it actually paid really well. So like after a few months of being at my brother's, I got my own apartment. So it was almost like six months after my mission, which I felt like was really quick. But I had my own apartment and I went crazy. Like I was hooking up with the guys all the time because- I mean, still are. Oh, that hasn't changed <laughs> at all. But I, even at that time, like I was on Grinder, I was on Tinder. I was on every dating app possible so I could find a man. Because here's the thing. In high school, I never had that, like, dreamy, romantic, like, beautiful first kiss no. and going to prom with who you actually wanted to go with. I never had any of that. So I was like, I am on my own place. I'm financially all on my own. No one can kick me out or get mad yeah. at me for being gay. So I'm going to live my truly best life. And it was almost like eight or nine months of constantly hooking up with guys. I'm just And no one knew. Guys yeah. would come over and they'd be like, wanted to post on their Snapchat story, like, watching a movie together. Like, and no. they'd be like, no, get your phone away. Yeah. Like, I was also really mean because they were like, I want to meet your family. And I'm like, oh my, no, what the hell are you, who do you think you are? <laughs> like, absolutely not. Like Immediately I was shut down. A hundred percent. And I hurt so many guys' hearts because I was so like, they wanted something, but I just was not ready. Yeah. And it broke my heart. But I was at that point, I was like, okay, I'm sick of hiding it. Like I would have my brothers text me like, hey, we want to come over and see your new place. And I'd have a guy over. I'm like, uh, no. And I, it was just constant anxiety. Like, someone's going to see my text eventually. And something was held above your head. Yes. Yeah. Like, I did not want it to get out. I wanted, yeah. I was like, not going to, I was going to wait years until I came out because I just was not ready for negativity. I was also in a really dark place because I was hiding it and I was so anxious. So I was like hiding it for so long until I talked to my sister about it. Katie. Katie. Love you, Katie. Love you, Katie. And I told her and she texted, because I texted all of my siblings except for one. And I feel so bad that I texted it, but I just truly was like, if they have anything negative to say, like I will shut down and yeah. I feel like I will resent them and have like that negative feeling with it, like seeing their face, like, yeah. no, like I just was so scared. And I remember I told Katie and she's like, she, I sent her like a novel text. Aww. Like I'm still the same person. Like I promise I'm still a good person. All this stuff, like trying to reiterate, like I'm still a good person. Like I promise. And she just texted me, can I come see you? And she came to my house and we balled together. And Aww. we basically from that note on, she's like, what's your plan? Yeah. And I'm like, not telling mom and dad. That's for sure. Yeah. They're not going to find out ever. Like, I did not want my parents to find out. Mm-hmm. 
So I remember the whole process of coming out to my siblings was one of the most beautiful experiences ever because I was so scared and I value their opinion so much and I'm so close with all of them Mm -hmm. that I was like, if any of them are like, absolutely not, like I'm screwed. Like family events are going to get ruined because they're probably not going to go. I was so worried. And I was also worried that like just opinions about me from other people or they're going to ask, like talk to my siblings about it and be like, so is Scott doing this? Like I just was so scared. Yeah. So I remember like just slowly, like it was literally within a span of like two weeks sending a text to a sibling in a group chat with their wife. And I was like, it was almost the same one in every single one. Just like, I'm just putting it out there. Like, this is the situation. If you need time to talk, let me know. I'd love to talk to you about it. All of them. Like when I saw them in like the first off their text back, I have all of them screenshotted still because they were so beautiful. Yeah. But I remember like the like reunion, like after seeing them after the text was so beautiful. Yeah. Embracing me. What's the plan now? Are you dating anybody? What's the plan for the wedding? Like everyone was so supportive about it and it was so beautiful and now everyone was like, so who in the family knows? Like, it was like this fun thing. Yeah. And no one was going to talk about it. Like, they were very respectful about how, like, I'm going to tell people on, on my own, own time. Yeah. So uh, I remember, like, they were like, are you going to tell mom and dad? And I'm like, absolutely not. Like, I'm going to hide this shit as long as possible. Yeah. Because I just, they're two people out of all my siblings. Like, their opinion matters to me the most. Mm-hmm. And I remember for my parents, as far as the coming out story for my parents, I wrote a letter mm-hmm. that I was planning on dropping off. Because I just was so scared to tell them. And it was like a three-page letter front and back. I still have it. And it's so sad to read it now. But I remember like basically filling it out. And I was at my brother's house who lived pretty close. And I'm like, I'm going to go drop it off. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we'll come right back. We'll support you. If they want to talk to you, like you don't have to. Like whatever you want to do. And I remember I was so scared. So I had it in a little envelope. And on the envelope it just said, call me when you're ready. Mm -hmm. Could be weeks, could be months. I don't know. I was in my own apartment. So like if they want to talk, they have to like reach yeah. out to me. So I remember I put the letter in the door and I sat there for like, it felt like hours, but it was like probably 30 seconds. And I was like, this just does not feel right. So I started knocking and I was like, oh my God, like this is going to happen now. So I put the letter in my pocket and my mom just doesn't even know what's going on. So she's like, oh, hi, sweetie, come on in. And we're sitting on the couch and my legs, I'm not joking, were bouncing. Oh, I bet you And my so face nervous. was bright, probably was bright red right now because I'm so nervous even just telling the story. <laughs> and I was sitting there and my mom was like, like, are you okay? And I was like, I have something I need to tell you guys. And I did not want to look at them in the eyes when I said it. Yeah. So I pulled out my letter and I started reading it to them, mm-hmm. which was not the plan. I was so nervous that I, I did not even want to like hear an ounce of well because I would have immediately started bawling and left. Yeah. So I literally like open the letter and I start reading it and I just hysterically start bawling Mm -hmm. and I read it and I didn't look up once because if I looked up and saw angry faces I would have closed it and left well and you told me that your letter is still covered in tears oh it's it has like areas where like the ink is like spreaded because like I was legit just bawling and like wiping my eyes like it was so scary 100% accepted and so I finished the letter and I read the letter now and it says so many things that like I'm so sad that I said because it was so many empty promises. Like I promise I'm still going to be, you know, as active as I can and go to the church. Like reading it now breaks my heart because I was setting them up for failure almost. But I just was trying to lighten the load. As I was going to come out as bisexual first and then tell them I'm gay. Like I was thinking of everything to like lighten the load mm-hmm. so it wasn't heavy. And I finish reading it and I keep looking down for like 30 seconds and I look up and my dad just has the biggest smile on his face. He's the best. And then he looks at my mom and he said, well, I can't say we're surprised. <laughs> and I lost it. Cause I'm were like, you laughing? Oh, I started laughing after that. <laughs> and then they talked to me like adults, you yeah. know, like, what does this mean? What's the plan? And I wasn't very truthful with them at the time because I was trying to like not let them be like, oh, oh, it's just yeah. more and more and more. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like they didn't know that I was with guys. They didn't know anything. You weren't ready for that yet. No. Yeah. And that was like, I felt like a long time before they even knew. Like I yeah. still don't even do like certain things because I just don't want them to like be uncomfortable, whatever. And, uh, but ever since then, like it has been the most freeing thing. Like we'll be out in public and my dad will ask me questions yeah. to understand it, which yeah. that is all I want. You don't yeah. have to agree with it, support it. As long as there's equal respect with anybody 100%. and anything, when it's religion, careers, whatever it is, as long as there's equal respect, we can get along. Yep. And after that, it was a literal weight off my chest. Yeah. I went crazy telling people. I was texting my friends. I was texting. They're like, hey, so, I'm gay. Hey, and I was texting friends. I was texting family. Like I went crazy and I was like planning like my coming out post on Instagram. I was so excited for that. Wait, what was it? Oh, actually, I wonder if I still have it. 
Um, I did a photo shoot in my apartment, like by myself, took pictures of myself in a hat to like look cute. And I typed out this long ass post. That is the cutest thing I've ever It was heard. really cute. I'll be honest. It was really, 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 really tender. But it was like, actually like the day of, I remember it was at my sister's house and I was so nervous because I was like, people could like unfollow me. And I did lose a lot of followers that day. I didn't have a lot. I think I had 2,000 followers, but I lost about 200 followers that day. Just from LDS people? Yes. And I got a lot of mean texts when people found out from my church. From uh, Saying what? So, for example, there was... So, when you're on your mission, you are friends with the ward. And people from the ward are like, to protect my kids, I'm going to have to unfollow you on social media. Or, I don't agree with what you're posting. I don't... I don't... I You know, it's too sexual... And just a lot of messages that I still have. I have them screenshotted to the this way day. I wish I could sit down in front of all those people and have a conversation. And it's so funny, too, because I had some people tell me, like, if you go this path, you're not going to be successful. You're not going to be happy. You're like, yeah, you know what? I just thought, woke up one day and I said, you know what? I think I'm going to be gay for the rest of my life. And that's what I would respond back. <laughs> I said, if you really think I could choose this, yeah. it wouldn't be gay. That's yeah. for sure. Like, it's, it's growing up the way it was. A literal fuck? hell. And I remember one of my bishops specifically, and I told my parents about this, and they were so blown away. Um, and I will never forget this. If she's listening, I doubt it. Yeah, you but listening? But he told me something that like truly like changed my opinion on everything. He said, if you are about to choose this lifestyle, which first off, don't use the word choose, please. Yeah. But if you are about to embark and choose this lifestyle, you are never going to be happy. And he said this verbatim to me during an interview, very quickly after my mission, and you will never see blessings and success in your life. And that has driven me to work so hard what to prove him wrong. fucking asshole. It was the worst response that oh anyone God. could have said. And when I told my parents about that, they were so thrown back. And this eight-year-old man was telling me this. If and someone said that to my kid. Mm -mm. Which I'm like, mm -mm 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 -mm. you just think. And then he messages me weekly, why aren't you at church? And I'm like, after also, those kind of comments. It's... You're just driving me farther from the church because 100%. you're not supporting the person that I am. This is not a choice. This totally. is me as a human being. 100%. If you're not going to support that, then I don't want to be a part of your totally. church. So it was really, really leaving any religion for anybody is so hard. And people think just leave it and shut up. Well, no, because everyone has an experience and it's everybody's journey. So if they want to post about it, that's their right. Yeah. So I remember like I was so scared to post on my story like – grocery shopping and like having a bottle of wine in my cart when when was this choice of because you obviously you came out to your parents and you said you were still going to be involved with the church yeah. when were you like yeah actually i don't want anything to do with the church so when anymore? i got home from my mission i went to church once and that's when my bishop told me that and i never have been back since because you told your bishop you were gay mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. never went back since and uh, he did see my facebook post because he liked it when I posted it a year and a half later. Um, so hopefully that taught him like, careful what you say to people. But ever since then, I have not been back. And uh, I think people are like, you just got lazy. Because here's the thing, when you're involved with something for so long, especially when it's like religion, it's so hard to like separate from that. Because there are things I value so much about it. And I feel like a lot of people can, you know, from an outside perspective, see the beauty of family. Mm -hmm. I love my family you know, being a good person, having good morals. Those are things that I will always hold near and dear to my heart. But when it comes to certain things like shame and guilt, I just don't think any religion can really offer that specifically. So after I left the church, I just kind of lived my life and did things that make me happy. Yeah. And it was really hard on Sunday. I would never go out in public and like go to like a coffee shop like I wanted to because I was so scared I was running into like a family member or, you know, a friend and have them yeah. be like, why are you here or wow. something? So it was truly just like a separation part that took so long. I feel like still to this day, I just am always very respectful because my family is all very LDS still. And I will always be their biggest cheerleader when it comes mm -hmm. to anything big in the church. I will never bash them. I'll never talk negatively about what they're a part of because they love it and yeah. it works for them. And I love that for them. But for me, it's just not in the books right now. Just been what makes me happy because it's my life and I can yeah. do what I want. So I've just been ever since and I've literally never been happier. Well, you also are just the the biggest – you're so open to everyone, who they are, their opinions, their beliefs. You're never judgmental. And it sucks when you are that type of human and willing to 
still embrace, you know, your family and their beliefs when you have people like that person that yeah. absolutely shit on you. Oh, 100%. All for the who time. you are totally. as a human, you know? Absolutely. Like that, in my opinion, you don't belong as a leader in a church. No. In any 100%. way, shape, or form. Absolutely not. If, if you are going to shame someone for who they are, you have no business being a leader in a religious totally. aspect. Could not agree more. But that's just my opinion. And that's a great opinion. So you got back and you did construction and then you got back into weddings. Yeah. So I before have, we met. It was so random. I after I came out was spontaneous and was like, I'm moving to Florida. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. <sighs> so random. This Florida era in your life. One of my favorite, favorite siblings, which I know he's listening because he's so supportive. I love him. Steven, my brother, moved to Florida. Hey, Steven. Literally the best. Him and his wife are some of my best friends. Moves to Florida, and they have always just been, in my definition, just so loving, so accepting of everybody. Mm -hmm. And I was like, after I came out and was receiving negative messages, I would see people in public that I you know, kind of knew, but they would have weird looks towards me. And I just was like, I need a change of scenery. Yeah. I literally packed up my car one day, sold my lease, and drove down to Florida and, and lived with them for a long time. Because I was like, I want to get out of here. You know what? And I believe you so much on the weird looks because when you and I were in Salt oh. Lake, remember when I almost got in a fight with that family? Oh, it was bad. Definition. So when we went to Salt Lake for the podcast, Scotty gave me like a pep talk to warm me. And was like, hey. I was like, have you ever been to Utah? Have you ever been to Utah? <laughs> Here's what to expect. And I was like, no, like, it's fine. Like, I'm a tough bitch. I don't really care what people totally. have to say about me. And I was in, like, a full sweat. So, like, I wasn't yeah. even showing anything but my neck up and my hands. Oh, totally. The looks I got, it was like they knew I was not Mormon. Oh, totally. But then we were in that toy shop. Oh, that was bad. And you and I were talking. And they heard your voice. Mm -hmm. And those young boys that were teenagers yeah. with their dad talking shit about you, yeah. like hitting their dad, like, like pointing, like, ugh. Totally. I literally almost. Oh, I was. I, I was legit was like, go Avery, please don't. Please don't. I know. Scott was like, please don't say anything. I was, I was so like, scared. If I, I do, oh, I'll yeah. probably have the cops called on 100%. me. 100%. So disrespectful and just disgusting. Totally. And I also want to look at that dad and be like, please look at what you're raising right now. 100%. Literally the most judgmental kids. And they were like. 12 and oh, 14 so young just so nasty i'm like i don't care what religion you're a part of but yeah. you're if you're gonna be a hateful person 100%. you're just a hateful person totally no matter what you're hating against you're just nasty Ugh, so i can only imagine the people that you knew mm -hmm. and then you came out oh i was terrified oh that's so sad i i have to say though like the comparison from the love to the hate the love was just yeah insane Which i got kept you going so many i gained so many new friends from it i've literally like had the best support system ever since so like when someone looks at me different or will come up to make a comment and be like guys should not have their ears pierced or you should not be wearing you should not have your nails painted something so stupid and my five year old's like no literally i'm like it's every time that happens now i just i have to remember like i have such a beautiful support system yeah. and those people are obviously so miserable and so depressed in their own life that yeah. they have to bring me down for sure so it's been such a learning opportunity for me and i've been so grateful for it because i've become so much stronger and so much confident in who i am as a person and as like in my sexuality as well i i remember when i came out i was like if anyone asked me in public are you gay I'm like oh no 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 like i was still scared so i feel like it's taken a lot of time and tears but i feel like it's been such a beautiful experience to like fill into this person that mm -hmm. i was always supposed to be yeah and have such a beautiful support system yeah okay so sorry you packed up you went to florida yeah so i packed up and moved to florida and you're like fuck arizona oh People yeah are so judgy and the here. funniest thing is like my brother's kids they're so young they're like ziggy's age mm -hmm. little little and i they're just the most they're the coolest kids and i remember like i first moved there and they were like like, we're going to get you a boyfriend, like all this fun stuff. <laughs> That's so cute. They made my move so exciting because I was so like sick of the negativity. Yeah. And I saw people in public. I mean, Gilbert is so small. Oh, you yeah. see everybody. Yeah. And I was just so sick of seeing people like, and you know, noticing that my, I was losing followers. I'm like, oh my God, everyone hates me. I need to get out of here. Aww. Like I need a positive outlook on life. Yeah. And I can go on Sunday to go get like a drink or something and not feel guilty. And they were the way, like the ones that made me feel that way the most. So I was like, I need to go. And I lived with them and it was literally, they were in an apartment because their house was being built. So they literally like had a whole room for me and everything Aww. like ready to go. They're like, we're in an apartment because our home's not done, but we would love to have you. How long were you there for? I was there for, I want to say six, seven months. Okay. What, did, what were you doing for work? I worked for Yelp. 
Did you? I did. Like it from was home. So, oh my God. It was so bad. <laughs> I legit was like, I have to do something. Yeah. I didn't need to make a lot of money because yeah. I was living with him for free and I didn't really have any debt. So I was like, I need to just do something to pay the bills. So I worked for, I did DoorDash for like the first few months because I'm like, I don't need to make a lot. I just yeah. need like a couple hundred dollars here and there. So I did DoorDash, hated that. Worked for Yelp as just a customer service sales rep or whatever. Did fine with it, I guess. And then I was like, okay, I feel like I'm like healed. I can yeah. move back. But I will say one funny thing, like me and my sister in law are very close. Like we'd go shopping all the time or go get coffee together. And she, we went to Marshall's mm -hmm. and they have these like bags. And when you like, like when you buy, like you don't use plastic bags, they give you like a tote. Yeah. And it was like Women's History Month. So I bought this gorgeous bag of all these like hot women on it. And I go home and my niece looks at me and she goes, mommy said you like boys. Why do you have a girl's bag? <laughs> and I'm like, the fact that like, she's just so like already just so loving and accepting That's was so, so sweet. Cute. But I live with them and they truly healed me. Like yeah. they listened to me. They let me have the feelings that I felt. And they're just like my like parents, honestly. Yeah. So I got a really good job opportunity back here, which didn't last long, but I, I moved back. I worked for a doctor's office for like two months and it wasn't really working. And then I finally got back into photography again and yeah. have been doing that ever since. Since like 2021. And then let's talk about our story. Oh, the day that I met you is the most <laughs> iconic thing ever. Because it was like right after you got your boobs done. Oh, slight. Like two they were, weeks They were really high and tight then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I remember actually you and Danny mm -hmm. went and got Joyride. Yeah. And we were hanging. I was hanging out with someone and we were like, I want to like, Danny was like, you would love Avery. Because me and Danny were like getting really close yeah. too. Yeah. He's like, you would love Avery. And I was like, I want to meet her. It was slightly inebriated, but she comes yeah, over and not sober. I felt like ever since, like we've all just been such a tight knit mm -hmm. group. The and first thing you said to me was, you. oh my God, I love your gold jewelry. Oh, I was, and I was like, obsessed oh, with your I love stack. you already. No, I immediately fell in love with you. Literally so cute. And uh, I felt like it was months of just like getting along and like, you know, hanging out and everything. And then you would mention like here and there, like. I want to start a podcast really bad. Like I've had it in like in the works for like two years mm -hmm. and I really want to do it. And I'm like, let's do it. Yeah. And you literally, like, I think the, the Lord for Avery, but I literally like have made a whole career out of it. And it's been this beautiful experience, like seeing her podcast from like day one of like setting this place up, buying equipment. Oh, we literally oh, gutted was, this entire casita. Oh, this is not a different place. This is a whole different place. Did the wallpaper. Yeah. Scotty took the light down. I mean, we like literally. You completely transformed this place scratch. to like the most beautiful studio. And it has been truly the most beautiful experience. It's been my favorite job ever since. Oh. And I was doing weddings for so long. And I was just like, oh, I remember telling you, I was just like, oh, like, I'm so sick of brides being negative. Yeah. Or I'm sick of like. I do all this work and I don't get paid enough. Like I was just like always talking about like just the negative parts of photography, which I loved it and I'm very grateful for it. And I remember like when we were going over, like, let's get this going. I was like, holy shit, like my life's about to change. And mm -hmm. it totally has. I've been on, so, I've been traveling so much more than I ever have meeting so many amazing people. Before you started working for me for the podcast, he only went on one flight in his life and it was for his mission. Yeah. So when you told me that, I was like, holy shit. You were like, we need to go here and here. And I'm like, what the hell does that even mean? Like, I don't even know. And you're like, oh, do you have TSA pre-check? And I'm like, oh, honey, that's thousands of dollars. Hell no. I literally and bought I was it like, for not him a, and made not it schedule an so appointment because I was like, I am not waiting in security for you I any know, longer. Truly. I, it's been, and then the hotels we've been to. <laughs> oh, so cute. Nothing compared to what I've been to like growing up or anything. That <sighs> well, makes me so happy though because I love giving you those experiences. Like I love taking you to like nice restaurants oh, I or like never did that. things that I've experienced that... Obviously, I didn't experience that stuff until I was in my later 20s as my career has changed. Totally. But it's so much more fun to experience it with you and like seeing oh, you for the first time because you're always like, My reactions are always what? like, no, I was going to a hotel and I'm like, wait, you get champagne right when you walk in? <laughs> I'm like, oh, damn. No, it was Did, the They take your bags up for yeah, you? I'm goes, like, shit. He goes, wait, they take your luggage to your room. I was like, oh, yeah. And it's still this way. Yeah. It's the, like when it's she talks so about like cute. where we're going it. in hotels, I'm like, oh Or when I bought your my. aloe set. Oh, oh yeah, for I those was that, so pissed. For those that aren't watching, we're matching head to toe today for really Literally, alive. well, I don't take this off. I wear this thing every day. It's literally your entire personality. A hundred percent. And now this hat is. Okay, so what's it like um, working for me? Oh my God, it's truly a dream come true. Am I a bad boss? <laughs> a bad boss? Are you buying the aloe sets? And, oh, oh no, truly. Stop. I would... I think it was like the first few weeks was so interesting because I'm like, I have to be so professional. Like I need to impress Avery so he much. He literally went from like BFF mode to professional mode so quick. And I was like, 
wait, do you hate me? No, I would text her his, and I'd be like, his texts are yes, ma'am. 100%. No, literally. His texts are so short, no emojis. And I was like, fuck, is he going to quit? He hates me. I'm the worst. And it's so funny because my dad's like, you need to be professional. <laughs> like when it comes to like business, like she's, she's like giving this like whole new career and this whole life. You need professional. I was like, absolutely. I'm like, what do you need, Avery? Let's do this. Let's do that. Like Braddy is keeping you in it's, check. It's a hundred percent. But it has been the most fun thing to juggle, like being your best friend, but also like working for mm-hmm. you. Cause it's like, I don't know. I just feel like we flow so well together. Oh yeah. And this podcast has been a learning experience for the both of us. Yeah. Like we've truly like grown into this like beautiful thing and it's been such an amazing journey. We also know like when it's work time and when it's friend time totally. and it's nice cause we're just always here and Scotty really is part of the family. Like he has the house keys. No, he comes in the studio, sets stuff up. Half the time you're here and I don't even know. Oh no, literally. He's like, oh, I'm downstairs. I'm like, oh, oh slay. cool. Awesome. Scott or Stevie calls him doggy. That's true. She does call him um, doggy. You are doggy to our family. It's iconic. And both my kids are obsessed with you. They're the best. David loves you. I love them. I love um, you guys so much. I think you're the only man who would ever be comfortable with me traveling. No, literally. The US. I remember. No, it's so funny. I remember like our first hotel and I was like, like, what if like my feet stink? Or like, <sighs> oh my God, like what if Avery thinks I'm so feral? Like I was <laughs> so scared. I was also so scared to like, what if I forget to try? She's like going to fire me. I'm more feral than you. No, oh, oh, in different genres. Yeah. 100%. When you say that, you think I'm going to fire you. It's funny because that's like our long standing oh, joke. If you do anything, I'm like, yeah, you're, you're fired. actually fired. No, literally. It no, would it's take so funny to joke something around. like world ending for that to happen. Which, knock on wood, that hasn't happened no, yet. No, that would never I happen. You knocking on Sherpa. I know. I'm like, there's wood under here somewhere. Okay, so what's your favorite part of your job? Oh, my God. Wait, actually, let's go through like your responsibilities. I don't feel like totally. people know. Yeah. I, well, first off, a lot of people comment thinking I'm your mistress or your husband <laughs> or your brother. He can't so, get it up, okay? No, lit- the fact that people comment like, so is that Avery's brother? I'm like, no. <laughs> hey, I'm so, honored because that means I'm really good looking. It's the really whole handsome. process basically that you see on the podcast I basically cover as far as like yeah. setting up equipment, um, editing, pre and post production basically. So I do all the editing, uh, clip everything. When we travel, I pack up all the equipment and I travel with everything. Literally all of it. Well, you also do graphics graphics for instagram you run the instagram instagram he helps me we, me with my comments now on tiktok because people are so negative mean. ass people so that makes my life a lot easier basically anything she needs i'm here also sometimes you're like my assistant in the sense of like can you please go get this for me? yeah literally can you pick up this on the way here <laughs> like please give me black oh a hundred percent and it's so funny too because i was so like excited for this job because i knew because i got to quit weddings yeah which was like if I was able to do that, like, I've made it. And, like, to be able to, like, not have to book weddings anymore was, like, the best thing ever. And I was so excited because I'm, like, I get to be a part of this beautiful production. I'm awful in front of the camera, so, like, it's perfect for me. But I, like, am so shocked. Like, Avery just trusted me with everything. Like, I would ask you, like, are you sure? And you're, like, I trust you. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, so crazy because I'm, like, I've never had a boss like that before. I've been my own boss, but bosses that I've had, I've never been able to be my full authentic self. I'd always, you know, be a little different. So my boss was like, oh, he's gay. Get out of here. <laughs> like, I can truly be like my full self. Literally coming over here, the fact that this is work is just crazy to me. Yeah. Like, it is truly like the most dreamy thing I could ever have. Well, and you just have such a creative eye and you're so good at it. And you also know my style where I can trust you in the sense of I know you won't steer me wrong. Totally. You know, or do anything 100%. that's completely off kilter i also love that my kids are around you all the time because 100 there's not a lot of people that are consistently i mean i have a lot of people in my life that are gay but you're here all the time totally. so for my kids it's just like oh wait, the fact when just, ziggy's like human being so do you have a husband yet i <laughs> like you just i like, straight up I'm like you know what that's a good thing i need to get on top of that you're like we're working on it we're working speaking on it. of yeah scott has commitment issues oh the Respectfully. commitment issues. But we need to talk about when you're going to get married and oh the God. wedding plans you have because they're actually iconic. And I'm, I'm so excited to plan that. So, so, so excited. Yeah. Tell me I about literally it. have my wedding plan and like I already know what I'm going to wear in my ring. So I already you know what the bridesmaids are wearing. Oh, the bridesmaids are going to look hot as hell. Yeah. All right. All so my, tell me about it. My wedding, dream wedding, is like a very foresty vibe. Mm-hmm. Like out in the wilderness with like the people, honestly, if you have not supported me, you are not going to be there. No. Because this wedding is going to be gay as hell. <laughs> like, we're having everything. Like, yeah. it's going to be so gay. So if you're not, if you were never, if you're not invited, that's why. Anyone that's been negative and, like, considers yeah. family or friends. And um, then, no, it's the, pe- no, do you know what really gets me? Sorry to cut you off. Oh, no, you're fine. It's the people that were not very nice to you or accepting, and then they see you work for me now, and they DM you all the time. Oh, it's the fact that I get that 
all the time. Or they're like, does Avery need help with so-and-so trying to get me to hire? I'm like, oh, excuse me. Does she need an extra assistant? Does she need lashes done? Does she need this? Does Where she need were that? you when you were a fucking dick to me? A hundred percent. All those people that were so nasty are now like, I would love to help if you need anything with that. Like literally for free. Like I'll do anything for you. And it's just like, this is really interesting how the tables yeah. have turned. Mm-hmm. So yeah. But well, yeah. You're better off without them. Oh, hundred percent. But my bridesmaids are going to look so hot. Yeah. And we're wearing white pantsuits, boobies out. Yes. We need we're talking out. no bra. No bra, no like cut. pantsuit, like yes. up and pretty, Slick like back hair. 100%. Like yeah. you guys going to look hot. Yeah. And then we're both, me and my husband are going to wear black tuxes when I find him. Are you going to do a Prada bolo tie? Oh, after or, seeing David's? Most likely. <laughs> or 100%. like a, a tux bow tie. I think bow ties are so gay, so probably. Yeah, They're I love so those. cute. It's so iconic. <gasps> we should do like a velvet suit moment for you. Oh, I doesn't say. We have to wear something different texture. I feel like if it was like a black or navy or maroon velvet. Ooh, uh, velvet would be iconic. Yeah. But yeah, something. Now that you say a Prada bolo tie, I'm like, ooh. Well, now we have to like find you someone that you're willing to commit. Yes, if you're listening. Because I feel like you just need to find that right person and then you'll be fine committing. 100%. It's just hard. And maybe I just haven't found the right person. It's true. Because there have been a lot of amazing guys in my life. Like I've had amazing, amazing boyfriends in the past that have been so, so sweet. Especially like right when I was like in the stages of coming out. The fact that some of them like were still like willing to like come over, props to you. Yeah. Because I was not nice. I have this video of Scotty. I need to find it. Oh, we no. need to do like an overlay oh. on an Instagram reel of this <laughs> I clip. About when we were in the hotel. Yeah. Oh, Scotty. God. Scotty. So one thing about Scotty, he will always be swiping on Grinder. Like 100%. it doesn't matter where we are, Night what day. day. He will change that location the second that plane lands and 100%. we go to that hotel room. You've yet to meet up with anyone. I know. Unless I it's when like, I'm sleeping. I'm like, mm, that you know of. No, I'm just kidding. But I have this video of him just passed out in bed with grinder open and his fingers literally just resting on the screen. I was like, it is that the day. Funniest video. We'll post ever. it on the story when this comes but out. But it's so your personality. Oh, 100 percent 100 percent Even in your sleep, you're looking for the D. Oh, dreaming on it daily. <laughs> daily. You're so iconic. Okay, well, I love you so much. I love Thank you. Thank you for being here. Oh you God. are a natural. I appreciate you that. You need to take a shot. I haven't looked at that camera once since I'm like the minute I look, I'm gonna get freaking red. Oh my god, it's you're fine. so cute. I love you so I much. I love you so much. Thank you Thanks for having me. Thanks for being me. my BFF slash employee. Oh my god. Your hands are so sweaty. Yeah, I was going to say, I love that for if you. this was a gray sweat set, you'd see all of that. <laughs> I'm dripping in One thing right about now. Scott is the studio is at 60 degrees always because he's a sweaty man. 100%. KY, I love you so I much. I love you so much. Thank you for having me. Cheers, guys. Oh.